Faye, Ibrahim, and Muhammad, can you hear me? Yes, Professor. Okay, good, good. So we got the chat thing going on. Thank you, Ibrahim. Okay, so last ex last uh, lecture, we were doing the exercise about the uh, the media player. And um, so let's continue. I think we've done like A, B, C, D, and E. I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll do it again anyways. Not the whole exercise, but just to remind you, this exercise about a media player that plays uh, a video libraries. And uh, uh, we, we had an editable library field and put down the name of the library, and then it tells us how many videos exist and then what current video we're playing. And then next we have a status. We got ready, playing, and uh, pause. And then we got the volume goes from one to 30, maximum 30. Okay, we got the plus and minus volume. That's, that's pretty obvious play and the stop. And then uh, previous and next to move to the next videos and back again. Okay, I'm not sure which file that I put up. Okay, so um, I think we've done all the way until E. Okay, but we'll do E once again. Okay, just just in case. So let me just um, bring this up over here and let's just do a view split. Let's split the screen so that we can see both. So at the top here, I'll try to bring that okay and at the bottom okay so it says pressing next button on uh the the um causes the video selection to increase by one if the current video is the last video and and the library then the video is uh selection is set to one so it loops back again so this library that we're going to be using has just three so once we get to three and press next that means we go back to one and that we're ready at all times now I can't remember on the previous exercises which video number we were. Um, I don't think we pressed next at any point. So we were still at one, okay? So now, given that we are one, okay, uh, how do we wanna play this? Remember, remember we're doing action fixtures in this exercise and action fixtures have five keywords. First of which is the easy one, that's the start. Okay, starts the application, so starts a fresh history. And then we got press to execute a function, usually relates to pressing a button on a GUI. And then we got enter to just fill out a field, again, on a GUI. And then finally, the check to, uh, to check a value. Remember, press takes afterwards two values. They got to tell me what, sorry, one value. What is it you're pressing? Check, also one value. No, sorry, check two values. What is it you're checking and what is the value you're expecting? Enter two values. What is the field they're entering in and what is it that you're entering in it? And then finally start takes one value, which is the name of the application. Okay, but we're starting off here with, uh, with C, with, with E. So how, how do we want to do this? Yeah, no, tell me, tell me keywords that you say, Dr. Press this, this, that, move that, that, this, right? Uh, this, is, this is the way I want you to answer it. Words, we're, we're, it's it's uh, it's it's loaded. It's now on video number one. As far as I remember, that was the case from last from last week. Okay, so press next, then check what video number two, then. Yeah, yeah, check. Because part of the part of the, the exercise is saying that all the way it's it's the status is ready. Okay, so it's good. So now we've checked it. All right. Next up. Now we can do a check going from two to three, but that's really repetitive at this point. We're not really getting that much benefit out of that. Okay. So might as well get to push it three and then we'll check the loop thing. Okay, so how do we do this? Two presses of next. All right, followed by check video number one, check status. Oops, one. Okay. Hmm? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ready. Okay, so next exercise. This is one uh, I want you to guys at home, Faye, Ibrahim, and Dreya to, uh, to, to type in the chat what you think the answer is. So um, F says pressing previous button, pressing the previous button uh, causes the video selection to be uh, decreased by one. If the current video is the first video in the library, then nothing changes. Meanwhile, the status is always reset to ready again. How do we do this? So remember, right now we're at video selection number one. Okay. So we wanna we wanna wanna see two things. We wanna see that it can decrease when it's above one and that when it's one. Okay. So now but we gotta hold the history, right? So the history says we are at video one. So we wanna we can we can right now just actually check the, the deduction of one. So how do we do this? Now I want the guys at home. So Ibrahim Fay or um, tell me what to write. You can just type it down on the chat. Or or Dreya, Hamad Dreya. In the in, in, in my my ears in my in the in the in the mic. Uh, Guys at home. I think. Oh, okay. There we go. Huh. Ibrahim, yes, go. We need we need to check that. Uh, we don't need uh, to check anything. We don't need to check anything. Okay. It's not gonna it's not gonna help us do anything. We already done our checks from the last exercise. Well, now we want to take action. So we don't begin with checks. Okay, remember a checking is not a reset, just to make sure. So, Wait, so all, we're all continuing. The, yeah, we're continuing off for the last, the history. So we're holding the history. Action fixtures, the only type of fixture that holds history. So the last history we have is that we're ready and we're at video number one. Uh, okay, then uh, first, of all, first of all, we press next. Press next. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Okay, so press next. Then uh, check uh, video number two. Well, that's really useless at this point because we already done this checking of the advancement. Now we're looking for the deduction, the previous. Okay, so again, so the focus of exercise number F is not to check that it can go one up, but it can go one down. Okay? Yeah, but you need to be at at a number higher than one first to check the yeah program. yeah yeah which 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 is what you did Ibrahim, when we did press next we it just not my point i'm trying to say is we don't need to check it okay you don't need to check it okay we, we check the test that we, we were, we're looking after okay so we okay. press next now we know in video number two we don't need to check that okay so now we what do we need we need to do now uh, Ibrahim? press previous press previous exactly yes so press previous then Check one, check video number check one. Check video number one. And you guys can listen in again. I, I also encourage you guys at home at, at here to, you know, put you, so that you can hear you also your teammates. Uh, check video number one, whoops. And then, and then what else? Check what else? Uh, check status, ready? Yes, okay. So now we're at one. Now we want to make sure that when we deduct from one, it doesn't go any further, that it actually stays at one. This is what the exercise says. So how do we do this? Uh, press previous. Press previous. Then? Uh, check video number one. Video number one. And then again? Check status ready. Check status ready. Yeah, no, well, this is the way it was programmed. Okay, it's, it's, it's business logic as to if it's at one, it doesn't go to 30, uh, sorry, to, to three, to the other end. So when you advance and you get to the end, you loop back to the beginning. But when you're at the beginning and you go backwards, you don't, just, it's just the way it is, okay? The way they set it up. Okay, all right, so the last exercise, G, it says, 
uh, loading uh, a non existing library such as great saves.lib makes the uh, player not change its status whatsoever. So how can we do this? By the way, this one is a bit tricky. Okay, so let's go back and let's see the... Uh, hmm? Enter. Library. Well, let's do use the one they gave us. Great save, which doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, anything would have actually worked just the same. Yeah. Then, no, we, we don't check just yet. We got to load it. Press load. Then, check. Ready. Oh, status ready. Now, the thing said that basically, it's an action that is ignored and that we're, we're checking that the status remains the same. And we looked at the previous exercise. The last one we had was ready. So we're taking advantage of that, that we're already checking that it didn't change from the ready state to something else. But what we got to do is we got to check the other two states. Okay. That if it's playing, it stays playing. If it's at pause, it stays pause. All right. So this is why this one is a bit tricky. So, we're going to load up a fake library and see if it's playing, then it stays playing. And then we're going to load up a fake library to see if it's, it's at pause, then it stays at pause. Okay. Yes. This is the way it was set up. Okay. So what we're doing, we're executing, we're, we're okay. So the, the test says do such and such and such. We're doing it this way, okay? And it's saying that this is how it was programmed to behave, the way they set it up, okay? We're not really at a liberty to, to say, no, we're well, supposed to be doing this, okay? Based on our assumption of how we used video players before, okay? Just the way this one is set up, all right? All right, so we, we wanna get it to start playing. How do we do that? Press play. Because now it's playing the old library, and then check. Say what? Yeah, try to load it again. And then check that. That's playing. Now I want to get it to pause. How do we get it to pause? Press. No, it's not stop. Press play again. Remember from the previous exercise? You want the memo then, so. So pause, play again, cause it to pause, then check. Hmm? Yeah, check status, pause. Okay. And that would be the answer to the last. Hmm? After this one, this one over here? Here, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't, uh... oh, no, no, that's actually important. I was actually trying to attempt to load it again, the fake library. Actually, what I did miss, I missed something. Yeah, I have to load it again, and um, so, and that actually, after we do this, so press play and then load, and then press play, yeah. I actually, we forgot something, insert below. And then press, yeah, we got to attempt to load it and then check that the loading of a fake library didn't end up causing the status to change. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Say what? I can't remember there was, there is. See, that's the problem of stopping the exercise right in the middle of the lecture, but status yeah, and not ready. So not, not ready means, um, means um, I, I don't remember how we actually got to not ready. Okay. Well, anyway, it just, re whatever the case, you know how to get to it. So just for now, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> All right. And because it's just repetitive, we're just repeating the whole idea again. Whatever it is, you get it to not ready, then you load the library again, and then you realize that it's not ready again. But it doesn't explain how to get to not ready. So. Probably that's some, maybe something wrong in the exercise itself. But did it actually say if it's 
when there's no library, but th there was a library because we already from that history. So we got to start again, maybe the exercise. Okay. So maybe, yeah. So if we want to do the not ready thing, so we got to like start media player. Okay. So we know the status. We just got to load. Well, yeah, I got to load because no, no assumption. Sorry, press library, create saves.lib, press load, check status, not ready. Yeah, okay, so we'll put that again. Although it still didn't explain actually how we got to not ready, we're just using our assumption at this point. But does it actually say? I, I can't remember, Salaha. I don't think it said. I know because I wrote the exercise. <laughs> like I invented that exercise, so I don't think it actually exists. Yes. Hmm? Oh, did I press? Oh, sorry. Yes. All right, look, well, keen eye, although it's a very few students in the class, but it's actually a very keen eye to notice my mistake. I did a, quite a few typos in this one, but so you, you uh, hopefully you had a, now we're going to do even more exercises to make sure that this is hand down. And you, now what I want you to do so that I don't have to flip back and forth too much. If you can open up your Moodles. Okay. That's I don't know if you can open up your Moodle. Huh? And uh, you'll find a link under handouts, the folder called uh, fit exercises. Under it, there's uh, another file called three more fit exercise or something like that. I want you to click on that. And actually what you've seen, you've probably seen the, the um, three more. Yeah, yes, huh? uh, three more. yeah, yeah. No, no, three more. So there's a folder called fit exercises. You click on it, you'll find a file called three more fit exercises. Okay. And after the lecture, after we finish the exercise, I'll remove that file and post another file with the answers in it. Okay. And I think I've spotted in my own answers of the previous exercise, like a couple of typos. So you just wait a minute before you download the answer to the video player exercise just yet. Okay. Now this one I want you to do on your own. I'm going to give you a minute to start it, to, to, to figure it out. Okay. Um, we're testing the windows calculator. I think this is a Windows 7 calculator. And basically the test says, I want you to divide, I divide by zero operation results in an output that says cannot divide by zero. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it still behaves like that as such. So let me see the calc. Okay, so if I go nine divided by zero. Uh, yeah, actually it does. Hmm. All right, so um, what we're going to do, what I want you to do, I want you to break down this test into a number of three tests. Uh, and in an exam, of course, I'm going to tell you like exactly which three tests I'm looking for. I'm not going to leave it up to you to, uh, all right. So first of all, you know, enter a number divided by zero. See if it gives you a check. If it, you see if it gives you a, a cannot divide by zero answer. Okay. And the display where the, the answer shows in the middle, the skull display. Calculator. The, the display? Your skull display. Okay. So in, in the first test, I want you to, yeah, divide, say nine by zero, and then see if it gives you, I cannot divide by zero.
Andrea, are you here? Andrea? Can't hear you. Faye, are you here, Faye? Okay, so Faye, uh, you can, you can, if you don't want to talk, you can actually tell me the answers by typing it in the chat if you, if you can. Uh, it's although it's easier to just say it on the uh, on the speaker. So, can you just uh, start up the calculator, and uh, we're gonna make sure that the display is zero, and then uh, we'll do a divide by nine divided by zero, and see that if it gives us a cannot divide by zero answer. So, can you go ahead? It's not work. What is not working on your end? I'm still trying. Oh yeah, this one. Well, uh, you're supposed to be able to download it from Moodle. Faye, were you able to download it from Moodle? The same file exists on Moodle, even if the screen share, but screen share should be working. Okay, well, okay, well, while you, you sort this out, are oh, your moon is lagging? Okay. Um, so at least is the uh, screen share working now? Because it's the same exercise. You can see on the screen, you can see it in here as well. Okay, so can you give me the answer? Let's, the first test, start the calculator. How do I do this? You can type it or say it in the microphone. Looks like Faye is having some technical issues. Oh, did they? Oh, sorry about that. No, I, I'm seeing the shadow over here. It says open window. What window? She's trying to tell, well, obviously, well, I mean, she's trying to tell me something private. Uh, it's sure on the way. Uh, Faye, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say with open window. Um, I suppose while you sort this out, I guess we'll, um, we'll have some help from the class. So guys, can you just tell me how to start the calculator? Start calculator. All right, next up, I wanna, okay, check, display zero, next, yes, oops, press nine, press divide, press zero, press equal, Check, display, cannot divide by zero. Okay, uh, Sadun. Okay, now we, we've reached a situation that we're trying to divide by zero and it gave us that, okay. Now it says that nothing should be able to clear the display unless it's a C or a CE. Okay, you need to see the two buttons, the C and the C, okay. But, since we're in the situation, we might as well just try it out a few access, a few tests on the spot. So first of all, let's see if a number, that a number shouldn't remove it. Okay, so how can we do this? Any number. Yes, yes. Now, now we're trying to make sure. So remember, we're, we're making sure that the software is doing what it's supposed to do. And we're making sure that the software is not doing what it's not supposed to do. Okay, so any number, eight. press eight. Okay, good. And then check display. Exactly, cannot divide by zero. Five. Next text. Since we're in there, we want to make sure that the um, the backspace. You know this button here, the backspace. That if you type something wrong, that it doesn't actually do it, huh? Press. 
Backspace. Okay, the uh, last one. Uh, I want to see that a mathematical operation, a plus or minus to divide, doesn't do it. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. All right. So next up, uh, now we want to try out one of the two that actually can. Okay. Um, so I want to try out that the C will actually remove it. So I'm going to go press C and then check that the display is. C, it clears the whole um, formula that you put in, whereas CE just clears the last entry. It's called actually clear entry. Okay, so I put the C and it gives me, a, I'm gonna do check, display is zero. All right, uh, now I wanna make sure that the CE is also another one that does it. But in order to do it, I gotta go back to, a. a Cannot divide by zero situation again. So I got to set up, I cannot divide by zero again. Hmm? Yeah, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. So last time we were entering the values by pressing the button. Now I want to use simulate using the keyboard. So I'm actually entering, not pressing, entering into the display immediately something. Okay. In other words, I'm doing like this, enter, uh, display, Five, because it's an editable field. So you just press five on your keyboard, it edits it right away. Okay, and then enter. No, no, it's not the same, no. But what it does is just, it takes the five and it, and in, it actually literally just inserted as the value of the variable display. Okay. Uh, I suppose five divided by, yeah. I was doing it as like three different operations. Sure, I guess that's a shortcut. Okay. And then, uh, then what? Well, we don't do it. How, how do we actually do the equals with the keyboard? No, we can. Enter, enter. It's actually the button enter at this point. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm entering with the keyword enter. And, but it, just the fact that you've, you've entered it over here, it will execute it right away. Okay. Pressing only happens with there's something that I'm going to execute, but I don't have anything for that per se. Okay, so now uh, check, display, divide, oh, sorry, cannot divide by zero. And then I want to press the CE to check that the display cannot, oh, sorry, the display is actually now zero. Good job. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, my mistake here. Yeah. See, as you're doing this a lot, then you keep forgetting. <laughs> All right. So enter, display, enter, yes. Okay. So that'll be this for that exercise. All right, here, I'm, we're gonna skip this exercise because it's very easy. I'll let you do that on your own time. Now, this one is an interesting exercise. Anybody here played chess before? Yeah? You know what? Um, so this game, this chess game, uh, this is a current situation that it's in, what you see actually on the screen. All right, uh, just to give you the names in English, which might be a little bit different uh, than what you, you're expecting. So that little guy is called a pawn, okay? This one over here in the middle is called the queen, and the, with the, the one with the, uh, the lower head is called the, the king, and at the end, this is called the rook. 
There's other pieces, but we're not going to be using it in this exercise. There's no point in explaining it. All right, so it's called the knight, and then I don't know, I think the bishop, the other one's called a bishop, but we're not actually going to be using that in this exercise. Um, let me do a split here. Situation that we're in. Let me just reduce this. Now, again, guys, I probably need you to uh, open this up in Moodle in case you don't have or already don't have it in order to be able to see the screen. So let me just do a minus here. Okay. No, no, we'll just we'll skip it. It's very easy. You can do that on your own. It's really, really, there's nothing really to learn in the second exercise. Now, uh, this exercise has uh, two little uh, GUIs, one of which is responsible for moving and the other one is responsible for doing a whole bunch of uh, checking, okay? So the first, Ibrahim, I think somebody has left the mic on. I'm not sure if you're trying, okay. So um, we have the first GUI, it says basically the, the piece that you wanna move it, you say from and to, so um, uh, 3E to 4E, and then you type the color, which is really redundant at this point because it's, um, it has to be a certain color already. And, <coughs> and then you press move, um, okay. And then the other one, it's, it's for checking and, and the first half of that GUI, uh, you, you press down a type of a piece and then the color and it tells you how many of that exist on the board. So you say um, uh, pawn white and it tells you there's seven, okay? And then uh, the last one, you just write down a coordinates and it tells you what exists. For example, if I put down 5B, it will tell me there's a black pawn in there. Pretty straightforward GUI, all right? So um, we'll begin this exercise. Okay. Um, the first check, and again, I can't really have the checks display, the, sorry, the test actually display, so I need you to, I'm gonna open it up over here. I need you to um, read that from your screens. And basically, the first test says that there are seven pawns. Okay, Ibrahim, can you help me out with this one? Uh, can you repeat that, please? Okay, so the first test says we want to check that there are seven, like we have over here, and see which one helps us. Okay. And I can give you a hint now that it's gonna be this part of the GUI, of the second GUI. All right. Okay, but there aren't any, there aren't any buttons on the GUI, so I'm not sure. That's no, you don't, you, okay. Yeah, so they, they um, you, just, you just type in the type and the color and it automatically fills the field count. You don't have to press anything. Okay, uh, do I need to so. write start first? Well, if you, if that's a good question. So if we press start, then we ruined the whole, whole, the whole thing because now we got to reset the game. We want to oh, actually okay. do the checks given the current status. Yes. Okay, so uh, enter type uh, pawn. Just, just a moment. Enter type pawn. Oops. Pawn, yes. Uh, yes, Ibrahim. Enter color and I'm not sure which I'm White. supposed to enter there. It says, it's the, 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 the exercise, Ibrahim says, that there are seven pawns. I want you to have this in front oh. of you all at all times, okay? I, I can't have it because I got to show like many different things at the same time, so I can't show it, but I need you to see the test for yourself. So there are seven pawns, okay? So now- Check, count, check. seven. Okay. okay, very easy. So that's exercise number one, okay? Uh, test number two, says uh, that the black queen is in cell 6D. The black queen is in cell 6D. No, I'm not entering the count. Okay, so I'm using, I'm using this one. Okay, the first two is inputs. The last one gives me the output. 
Okay. All right. Now I want to check that the queen is in 6D, the black queen. Here's the black queen, and it's in 6D. All right. So I can use this half of the coordinates. So enter ban banana. Sorry. Coordinates. 6D. Yep, very good. That's, that's B. Uh, C says, upon moving the white pawn from E3 to E4 and moving the black pawn from D5 to E4, the contents of E4 is now a black pawn. So what's happening here? I'm moving this one over here from E3, one up to E4, and then Biaklo, the black pawn, by going diagonal. Okay, and now we want to check that the contents of this cell is um, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, it's a black pawn, and now that there is six, so we got two tests. So we want to make sure that E4 now has a black pawn and that the remaining pawns, white pawns, is six. Like, how do we do this? We, we, let's see. We don't have the presses here, okay? All right, not yet. We're gonna use this one to make the moves. Okay. Enter from, was it uh, E3? Well, E4, hold on a second. E3, yeah? E3, oops. Just my last one, last one. I, I uh, messed it up, okay. From E3, enter to E4. Enter, it was, it was a type of a color, I think color, yeah, color, white, and then press the move. Now we've got to move the other one. Enter from D5. Yeah, yeah, can you just, a little louder, guys. Enter to E4, press. Oh yeah, enter the color first. Yes, yeah, sah, 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 enter color, uh, black, press, move. Okay, now the first says, check that E4 now has, we did this before, E4 now has a black pawn. So enter. See, it's, very, it's, it's a fun exercise, right? Okay, check, content, black, Pawn. And also, we want to check that there is six white pawns remaining. So, enter. Remember this type pawn. Enter color white, and then check count six. All right, so that's that exercise. Okay, next test, it says, upon moving the king from D1 to B1, the white king, the white rook is subsequently moved to cell C1. So what happens, if those of you who haven't played chess, okay, this might the beat, okay? So if you can, you can switch with, uh, fr from D1 to B1, if that happens, then the white rook, goes to c1 okay it's a little switcheroo right and it it has to have a uh, there has to be nothing in between okay those of you who haven't played chess so basically we're doing two moves and one check of a content okay so the first move enter from d1 enter Two, B1, okay, press, move. Okay, you got a little louder, guys. Look alive. Enter what? Shouldn't we uh, move the white look then to C1? Oh, enter color, yes, yes. I keep forgetting this color thing. Okay, then press, move. Me. 
<laughs> okay, then press move. And then what? We want to move the white rook, so? No. It does move automatically. That's the way it is. Yeah. So now we got to do that. We got to check that C1 is a white. Yes. Enter coordinate C1. Check that the content is. See, I need you to help me out because I'm doing all these typos, right? So if I have to think of myself, then I do all these mistakes. But if you say it out loud, then, right? then I can find your mistakes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, is there more tests? Yes, there is more tests. I, just, I don't know where the heck it is. Hey, okay, it's, there's E. Check that the content of F7 is a white pawn. Where is F7? So F7 is actually over here. That's actually a black pawn. So what do we do? No, it's not a typo. Enter. F7. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to check. Exactly. So this falls under making sure that the software is not doing what it's not supposed to do. So. This would be a case that the test will fail, but we're actually happy that it failed, okay? Because we don't want it to be doing what it's not supposed to do. Now, when you see something like this on an exam, don't just freeze and say, oh, but doctor, it's not a, well, it's okay, okay? We're, we're putting up tests, we're expecting to fail, and it's actually a common practice as well, all right? Obviously, a lot more work goes into making sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do, all right? Not as much of the other one, but it's still, if you've been proper and you're doing proper software testing, you want to be able to make sure that it's not doing what it's not supposed to do. So yes, that F7 is not a white pawn. So once this goes to, to run, then I'm expecting that particular test to fail. So actually, why? It's on D1, it's uh, enter D1, yeah, why? So it, the king is already on D1, oh, that's the queen. Oh, I thought, yeah, I need to switch that. Well, assuming it was a king, <laughs> all right, assuming it was a king. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good catch, that's a good catch. Yeah, I, I flipped the, the, um, the icon, I apologize about that. So assuming that was the king, actually, I'll, I'll just have to flip him later on. But anyway, assuming that software runs and that it's actually running correctly, all the cells, the last cells of the checks will turn into green, okay? Meanwhile, the last one is the last one is gonna turn into a red, okay, a red background. Similarly for all the other exercises as well, okay? So this will be green. Um, uh, this over here will be green. Exactly. All of them will be green except for the last one. Okay. So, but I'm going to give you like a question on this on the exercise. It's going to say color. Now, if you say this one turns into green, for example, this one, green, eh, that's wrong. Okay. That, those ones don't turn into green. Okay. First one, again, that doesn't turn into green. Just the last cell of a check. All right. So um, that's not it for today. That's just it for the um, acceptance testing exercises. Now we're gonna begin a big, big chapter in this course. It's called uh, graph coverage. Let me just close this. Uh, we'll make sure that I'm sharing the proper screen. Uh, there we go. Oh, sorry. All right, so we're beginning a very, very interesting part of the course and it's called graph coverage. Why is it that we bother with graph coverage 
when we're doing actual software testing, well, basically the point is the code that we look at, there's a workflow at the code and that workflow represents, um, can be represented as a graph, okay? So we have a main function that calls function one and then function one calls function two, function two returns back to function one, which then goes back to function two, sorry, to, to the main, executes the remaining code in the main and then we're out, okay? So I can split the main into two nodes, all right? And then say that F1 is a third node and F2 is a fourth node. And then we're going back again to node, the second node of the main, and then we have exited the code, okay? And a lot of things, not just software, but um, source code, I mean, things like a use case diagram, a, a sequence diagram, an activity diagram, those are represented as graphs. And those graphs themselves tend to represent code as well, except for use cases, of course. All right. So the, the general, the, the generic notion of abstract is very, very useful. A, I get to visualize the code, something that is difficult to do when I'm just looking at text, okay? And then I can do a whole bunch of testing exercises and those text, testing exercises are called, um, related to coverage criteria, which I've talked about in the previous lectures. All right, and um, we're gonna figure out, we're gonna set out coverage criteria, look at, what are the test requirements to satisfy these coverage criteria? And then we'll look at creating test cases to make sure that the coverage criteria is satisfied, okay? And with it, we're actually covering the code, okay, at certain levels of those coverage criteria, i.e. at certain levels of confidence, okay? So remember like coverage criteria level zero, that's the weakest, but still better than doing nothing. Coverage criteria level one gives us more confidence, but albeit with more work, and that's but still better than doing level zero, and so on. Level one, level two, level three, and level four, and so on. So graphs are commonly used uh, structure for testing. They can represent many things. We'll focus mostly on source code representation in this chapter because it's really the most common thing that you see. Model-based testing, honestly, is rather uncommon in the field. There is a whole bunch of slides in the end for, this, uh, for, for these types of structural coverage of things like sequence diagrams and state charts, but it's not part of this course. I, I'm leaving it in this chapter as an FYI. If you want to read it at your own, it's not going to be part of any exam though. All right, so tests are usually in, intended to cover the graph in some way. Now, very, very important. We're gonna begin with a whole bunch of definition, okay? So a node, a set of nodes N, and anything with a capital N means it has a whole bunch of little Ns, okay? Capital T has a whole bunch of little Ts, okay? And in order to have a graph, you cannot have a graph without a node, okay? So N cannot be empty, okay? It has to have an initial node, okay? So the set of, or it can actually have one or more initial nodes, but minimum one. It has to, it can have a set of final nodes, NF, but again, a minimum of one. And also, I can have a graph where the initial node is itself the final node. In other words, it's a graph of one node if I really want. And then I have the concept of an edge, which is a line that connects two nodes, a predecessor NI, okay, a particular node with a successor NJ, another particular node, all right? Um, an edge coming in out of nowhere to a node that usually represents an initial node rather than it actually representing an edge. So you might see like a line coming in out of nowhere, okay, like this, but that's not actually an edge. At the same time, it's actually saying that this over here is an initial node, all right? 
it's uncommon that you'll see something like this, although if it does happen like an, a node pointing to thin air, that actually doesn't mean that this is not really a node. But at the same time, it's saying that this is a final node. All right. All right, so these are some examples of graphs, okay? In the first graph, the initial node set is just zero, then the, the final node is a three. The second graph, we have three initial nodes, zero, one, and two, and final node seven, eight, and nine. In the third graph, okay, it's, we, we, we have a final node, but we don't actually have an initial node. I mean, we have a zero, and that's the logical part, but it's not actually saying that the zero is where we start from. So the initial set is, is empty, which means that the last one is not a valid node. All right. Luckily for you, you'll be dealing with Okay, how, how about now, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Okay, so I just wanna, now what I wanna do is I wanna mute this so I don't keep hearing myself. All right, so Fat, can you hear me, Faye? And okay, everybody can hear me. Okay, good, good, good. So we'll, we'll keep it this as such, I just have to make sure I don't leave this area so that, uh, all right. All right. <clears throat> uh, how how long have I been cutting off, guys? As soon as you. I think, was it a long slide. time? I mean. Uh, doctor, it was from the last uh, last slide. It was at the end of the last slide. So did you hear me when I was covering this? Yeah, we went to the uh, last uh, set of nodes. And then it cut off. How about this one? Yeah, the last set of nodes. The last. Can you just uh, type in the chat? Because I have the speaker down to nothing. Low? Is it, is it connecting again? I'm not sure what the heck is going on. The last set of nodes. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, the last graph when it cut off. Okay, so I was saying, okay, let me just repeat that slide. So in this particular slide, um, we had a number of graphs, okay? And the first graph, the first graph, the first, let me just do this again, that's the laser point. 
the first graph had an initial node and last node, so that's okay. The second graph had a whole bunch of uh, initial nodes, zero, one, and two, and it had seven, eight, and nine as a final node, so that makes it a valid graph. In the last graph, it had just a final node, but it didn't actually have an initial node, and so we call this uh, not a valid graph, okay? And the next slide, I was saying, the explaining the concept of a path, and the path, basically, I can have a graph that has just the one node, and that one node would be a path, and basically a path is any set of set of um, nodes that are connected to each other through a set of edges. So this over here is a path, but this over here is not a path because it's not connected. The number of edges defines the number, the length of the path. So this over here, this, this little path, Ha is of size two. This path is of size zero, okay? Whereas this path is of size one. A subpath is any path that is as a whole subsumed by a different path. Okay, so this one over here, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that. This one over here is called the subpath of this bigger path. A node, remember we said that a node in itself is a path, and it can be defined as a path. So that node on its own is a subpath of this path, subpath, and this subpath is a subnode of the entire graph. All right. Um, finally, we, we, we have the concept of a reach. Let me just uh, erase. Okay. And a reach basically says we, we, we're starting off from a particular node and uh, we're seeing how far can I reach from that node, okay? So if I'm at here, this is node one, two, three. So the reach from node one is nodes two and three. The reach from two is just three. And three, I'm reaching nothing but three itself, okay? I can also define a reach from an edge. So edge one, two, this is how I, this is how I call it. Edge one, two, the reach from it is nodes two and three. So let's see an example over here. All right. So I got, here's a, a number of paths. Okay. The reach from zero, basically the entire set. No, not, not the entire set. Is it? Yeah, no, I can't reach two from zero. Okay. But the reach from nodes zero, one, and two, well, I'm actually reaching the entire graph. The reach from edge six and nine is just the node nine, and it's not including the node six because I'm actually beginning from here, okay? So it's just defining, it's just reaching this one over there, okay? And note here again, when I'm saying the reach from zero, that, in, that means I'm starting from here, which means I'm actually reaching zero itself, which is what's different from saying, what, what do I do or how do I reach, how far do I reach from a particular edge? The way you define an, a node, you just put down the number between brackets. If you want to define an edge, you put down square brackets and then you put down the two nodes with a comma in between. So that defines an edge. Okay. All this will go through definitions. Hmm? Zero again. Sorry. Zero. Yeah. So if I'm if I want to mention or state a node, I put it down. Just put down the number. Okay, like one. Okay. Bunch of nodes. Zero, one, and two. That means I'm looking for zero, one, and two. Edges are defined by the square brackets. Okay. So edge one, two. I don't know if it exists. No, it actually doesn't exist. Two five, I mean, that means I'm talking about this particular edge. Okay, All right now, this is a, a concept that trips a lot of students, okay, but it's, it's, it's actually pretty clear. Now, a path is different than a test path, okay, but think of it this way 
a path, is the general type, a test path is a specific type of a path. Now, what's different between a test path and a path is that a, a, unlike a path where I can define, say here, um, let me just erase this. This is a path, okay? Uh, this is a path, all right? This over here is the path. I can do anything I want, okay? I can say that this on itself is a path, okay? However, with a test path, I have to begin at an initial node, okay? Must, must, must begin at an initial node, and I must, must, must end at a final node, okay? This really represents, represents um, the way code is executed, okay? So I have a main function, okay? And it has two chunks of code, one and, and two, okay? And then the main function is calling function one, and then function one is calling function two, that's node number four. And then at some point, function two completes, goes back to three, goes back to one, but then it continues on the rest of the second half of the main and then it exits, okay? So this is an initial node and this is a final node. When you run this code, you cannot simply begin the execution at here, okay? And you cannot terminate an execution over there either. And this is why a test path has to begin from, the, from an initial node and has to, to, to end at a legitimate final node, okay? Whereas a path, any nodes, doesn't have to start at the beginning, doesn't have to start at the end, finish at the end or anything like that, okay? So when you run code, you can't say to your program, yes, run, but begin from F1. Even though you might be entering the input at F1, that's irrelevant. Still, the code starts from node number one, from the main, okay? And you can't just say smack in the middle after it, you finished F1, stop now, okay? You have to wait for the code to reach, to reach a logical end, i.e. reaching a return statement that doesn't have a return to a different function, okay? In other words, a return to the main, of the main. Okay, and this is where it stops. Okay, all right. Now, a main can actually have two different returns, okay? Because I, I can have an if else statement. Once I finish the first if, I, I return. If I do the second, I put in the else, I put a return over there, it's legal. There's nothing wrong with that. And I can put two different returns in there. But again, I can't just go smack in the middle of my lines of code and say, um, stop here, okay, or begin over there. And this is why a test path, and how it's different from a regular path that it has to, has to, has to begin from a start node. And now I say this and it's obvious now, a couple of weeks later when you actually have some sort of an exam or some sort of a, an exercise to do, and you'll get thrown off by the definition of what is a path and what is a test path. And then I'll see test paths, students writing down test paths, that aren't officially or syntactically correct because they represent the path. And some students are, are hung up on not being able to specify a path because from their point of view, it has to start from the beginning, an initial node and end at a final node. No, it doesn't. You could just give me the part that you want and that's it, okay? But then they end up giving me this long path because they're starting off from an initial node until the final node, okay? Can then, okay, professor, I got a question. Professor, can the initial node be considered a final node? Yes, okay. So, Ibrahim, uh, let me just do it over here. So, I have a graph like this, okay. This is node number one, and it ends, okay. Although, like I said before, these are actually not edges. Officially, they're not edges. But this node counts as an initial node and also counts as a final node, okay. Yeah, 